Wow, that's some good guitar picking, huh? Banjo picking. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> After that, everything sounds boring. I screwed up here, but luckily I was able to save. There was some old wiring there hooked up to a three-way switch that was over there and one because the door used to swing the wrong way over here. So I made notes of where everything went and I took photographs and I wired it back up the exact same way and all it would do when I plugged it into a power source which temporarily is over there is pop the breaker and I tried three or four different ways but I had taken photos so I knew where the red wire went and the black wire and the white wire. So obviously I screwed something up but I don't know what it is. So I'm thinking I just sheetrock the ceiling. I've got to run a new wire to there. There's power there for some reason and I don't know how it worked but whatever. So I'm thinking I gotta make a hole. I got a hole there. I gotta make a hole there and a hole there and reach my arms through and dry fish between Joyce, it was 8 o'clock last night, and Mrs. C.W. and I gave up working here at 8 o'clock or 8.30. Came in this morning, and I said, wait a second. The beams run that way. The strapping goes that way. I bet I can fish a wire. So I stuck a fish wire in. Wouldn't you know that it was the exact length from there to there. Not an inch too long. I could just touch the tip of it, so I taped on my 14-2 wire. And my nice wire reel and I fished the wire through the ceiling and it popped it on this side and in case you're wondering this is Roxel insulation. It's double the price and double the density and I wish I would have used it in the ceiling but it's double the price. That gap right there was actually open to the outside and I could hear the traffic going by when I went up on the ladder. So I took up the fiberglass insulation which is that piece right there I put a piece of rock in and the sound went away. That is really sound deadening, attenuating insulation. So I'm using it here on the staircase wall because there is a staircase right there. That's an old 1850s staircase with little spindly spindles and one of them was loose. So I put a nail in temporarily until I get my construction adhesive. All it holds it on is two tiny nails. Two tiny I tried to use a power nailer here and blew it up. Yeah, this is mahogany I think. Old staircase, it's creaky and it groans and pieces and parts are falling off of it. This part we reinforced because it's accessible from the basement. But this part needs the plaster and lath taken down and fixed up because the steps are loose, everything's loose. I put this reinforcing bar in and I heated that up and hammered it flat and used some old slotted screws to strengthen things because everything is wibble wobble. Cracks in the walls. I've got a lamp up here above the door so I can get rid of this switch that controlled this light only and that one controlled the one at the top of the stairs with a three-way switch but it didn't light up downstairs. So now this is cancelled and this one will light up the upstairs lamp and this one above the door. I didn't put it over there because they'd hit it with furniture and I couldn't put it over there because you can't fish from there to there very easily. I would have, should have, could have, but I didn't. I'll just put that one back and we won't use it. And this will be the new lamp for the landing downstairs. Look at that cement. Takes the teeth right off of the hole saws. So, I'm going to go back to finishing up a piece of sheetrock there. I'm going to sheetrock this wall now that I've got the wiring done and my fancy Roxel fireproof, soundproof insulation. It was hot in here this morning because the heat's on and we're fully insulated. I can get this ready to be sheet -rocked. Interesting how my sound, sound from my voice doesn't echo when you get next to the insulation. All right, that's all I use. 5 8 fire code, type X, nothing else. 5 8 fire code and nothing but the best. That's going to be sheet rock too. That's what I'm doing.
not going to the junkyard, though I did go yesterday, don't tell Video, me. video. I'm not going to make any videos showing me swearing because then you'd know that I have a filthy mouth and I know all the four letter words. I was going down the street yesterday and the speed limit's 20 because it's a school zone and I was going 20 miles an hour and some guy tried to pass me and I had to get into the left lane so I went in front of him and he was cursing then some other guy was following me past the school and I was going 20 miles an hour and he's flashing his high beams and hey buddy the speed limit's 20 and I'm going 20 because there's a flashing light that says 20 miles an hour. I was just thinking if we'd get out and have a conversation in the street, he'd be telling me all the four-letter words that he knows, and <laughs> my answer would be, yeah, I know all those words too. Cool it, buddy. Yeah, I go the speed limit. I don't talk on the cell phone while I'm driving. I don't text while I drive. I fiddle with the radio, mind you. I'm putting up a piece of sheetrock so you can watch me put the last inch in the last few centimeters. I was watching a video my buddy, Dust Urban Miner, made a few days ago. He went to a Citroën. Uh, Citroën. Citroën. Went to a Citroën get together. They had an open house, blah blah blah. I haven't seen a Citroën in years except for the one I saw it. Come on. <sighs> I'm trying to find a place to put this. I could always use that tripod I have in my pocket. Anyhow, so at the end of the video he shows the snack table. Coca-Cola. Donuts. I said, donuts? Yuck! He said, that's our national food. I said, yeah, same here. Coffee and donuts. Yuck. Somebody gave me some donuts recently. I ate one and threw the rest of them away. Actually, I gave them to one of my workers. That camera is just barely... All right. Small talk. There we go. Now, hopefully my drill is sitting on the windowsill right beside me. Just drill this up. Yep, it's right there. And I got some screws just stuck into the drywall, into the paper. Sheetrock screws are pointy, but don't use them for flooring. They're made for sheetrock or thin materials because they don't have any shoulder. I had a sheetrock screw gun here, but I can't stand using it. It makes too much noise. I'm too old. If it's too loud, you're too old. High speed. Crank her down. Here. I gotta put one more big piece up over there. I ain't looking forward to it. Remember that Lucille Ball TV show when she's trying not to say the word ain't are not? Well then plus one of those window panes. Here we go. Now I've got to cut my next piece. That was a pretty good cut actually. I'll show you. I was just texting a friend of mine also in Michigan who I went to visit. A year and a half ago when I was in Kalamazoo, he came to see me with his Durajunk, I mean Duramax, Isuzu. And I helped him change a U-joint. Oh, there's a big gap there, I gotta fill that up. Anyhow, he uh, works at the big box store and he bought an Aquasource toilet for one of his units. He's a landlord, just like me. I put some shims under there on these sheets to move it. There's some shims. I got some the old roofing drop ceiling to move that closer. This could go back also, but I just didn't want to take off these door moldings. Anyways, he bought an Aquasource toilet, an Aquasource, and I said, get rid of it, junk, buy a Kohler. They're the best ones and the new ones. Just suck that refuse, suck it away. It's a wonderful thing. All right, I gotta cut my big sheet now, which is six, seven feet. Yeah, this Roxel is top of the line stuff. I should have used it in the ceiling, but it's double the price. You get what you pay for. It's a little harder to deal with because it crumbles. The fibers are short. But let me tell you, this stuff really works well. I had a small opening from the outside, and I could hear the cars whizzing by. And I put some fiberglass insulation in, like that stuff, and I could still hear the cars. And I put some Roxel in, and the sound went away. So, get what you pay for. $44 a bag for the Roxel. I'll tell you how many square feet it is in a minute. Probably 40 square feet, whereas the insulation that I used elsewhere, the fiberglass, I don't have any left here. Uh, let's go look. Take a little walk. This is CW just from off the floors, and I'm walking with my feet. Here's this fiberglass junk. It's like cotton candy compared to a piece of steak. Learn how to install Roxel insulation, fire resistant. Huh? Uh, how many square feet? Or a bag. 
Oh, there's the old Honeywell thermometer. So I've got right over there. How do you like that? Boy, every house had one of those. Had a comfort zone, 72 to 78, which is what, 23 degrees <laughs> to 27? Yeah, comfort zone. Two by four, 60 square feet. This bag was $44. And this bag, which weighs half as much, has 87 square feet. So you get 60 in this one. And this one you get 87. So there's 60, almost 50% more in this bag. And this is 44 and those bags are 25. So you get a lot less. 8, 60, and 24, which would be 60. You get 33% less in this for 50% more money. But you get what you pay for. Because it costs the same to make it, I suppose, and bake it, and pack it, and ship it, and maybe the profit's higher because they don't sell as much. But let me tell you, this stuff is far better at sound attenuating. Sound control? I don't think so. That's the right stuff, and I should use that in the future. Too bad we've got a half a garage full of this. Yep. It's the real thing. The real deal. Roxel. They use it in commercial installations, and I should have put it in the ceiling, because when the tenants walk in the upstairs apartment, I could hear the sound of the boards creak, and that heavy stuff absorbs more sound. I've got to get some cutting done. I've got my template for that piece of molding. And we'll get her done. Got my wire run on my wire spool and winder. I bought that at the big box store. This thing is so handy. The wire just usually just comes off so perfectly. It should have a disc on top so the wire doesn't do that. It gets snagged. But it usually just rolls off here just like butter. Just like butter. There's my new wiring. And I gotta run, let's see, let's switch. I gotta run a power wire up to here. Power to there, three-way to the other switch, and then that lamp over there. And I know how to do that because I have three three-way wiring diagrams. Power at one switch, three-way to the other switch, and the lamp remotely. You can also do it. Power at the switch, lamp in the middle, switch at the other end, like a staircase where the lamp's in the middle. Or you can do it power at the lamp, which I don't like doing because why would you want to have power in a lamp when you're up in the air looking at something that's going to blow up in your face because you've got hot wires, but some people wire it power to the lamp. I prefer power to the switch with the lamp in the middle, or power to the switch with the lamp at the end of the run, whatever suits you or your choice. Simple circuitry. It's a wonderful thing. Get to work. More sheetrock. More sheetrock. Oh, another door. I forgot about this door. Oh, I hate doing sheetrock. Yucky poo poo. Hammer. Need my hammer to break this sheetrock. This sheetrock is so tough. Let me put the camera here. And where are we? Right there. This sheetrock is so tough. I have to use a hammer when the piece is too small to break it off. Oh man, this is taking me forever. Forever. Oh, that wasn't the best cut. What am I doing here? Putting the piece behind that door. I got this piece all cut and ready to go. I trial fitted it. I got my lower piece installed. I could have shimmed the wall, but I got the insulation thick, so I'll just fill that up with a piece of something or other. And lots of screws because I overstuffed the wall with insulation, which when you overstuff it can conduct noise and colder heat. All right, I gotta just trim that a little bit. And uh, I think I'm gonna have to cut this sheet in half. I don't like doing this white work. White sheetrock, white demolition, white paint, white plaster. I'd be looking at Pontiacs. Yep. Pontiacs. I gotta put some spacer behind there too. Yeah, we gotta fix this place up. We're getting there little by little. I haven't cut the sheet in half. I'm gonna see if I can install it in one piece, but I don't think so. I've gotta 
lift it and get around that molding and go behind there and the insulation's there and this is gonna be nasty. I just heard I just heard on the show marketplace with Kai Rizdal. He was discussing fake engine noises, Volkswagen Octor. Battery went dead. I was talking about fake exhaust noises. Porsche Actor and Ford F-150 enhanced exhaust noises. So I went to the house and got a fresh battery. My brother sent me an email of the Hellcat failure. Drive shaft twisted. I wouldn't say it's a pretzel. I'd say it's one of the candy cane twist. I was lifting this thing and heating it. And holding it. And dry broken. I'm going to kill myself for this. I got too many instructions. lift it up and move it away and get it behind there and just crunch the corner. I'm thinking just to cut it, put a joint into it and I could just stick a small piece, cut it here. That's what I'll do I think. Mrs. CW is busy doing paperwork. Well at least I got it on video. Where was I? Oh yeah, gotta cut the piece.